Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are talking about Moonvale. With Moonvale, it is a very common weapon. We are all very familiar with it, and we all know that it is a very dangerous weapon to fight against. But I think that a lot of people are overestimating how good of a weapon this really is, because it's not the weapon that's good. It's the skill. But let's go ahead and get started with the basics. This weapon is one that you get after defeating the boss in the Gale Tunnel in Kaled. I'll have an image on screen showing the location. The weapon requires 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 23 intelligence to wield, and it weighs 6.5 units. The skill of the weapon is Transient Moonlight, and that is what makes this weapon so special. At plus 10, it has a physical base damage of 178, a magic base damage of 213, an E scaling in strength, B in dexterity, and B in intelligence, and like other katanas it will deal bleed damage, and it is 50 bleed damage per hit. Now this weapon, before we get into the skill, we'll start off with the rest of the pros, because of course the biggest pro of this weapon is the skill. So aside from that, the other pros of the weapon would be that it is a katana. It has a good fast moveset, it's got a lot of forward momentum, it has good damage, and that's basically it. Now, the skill of the weapon, like I said, is what makes this one so special. Transient Moonlight is a straight upgrade to Unsheath. With both of those skills, you sheath your katana, your R1 attack after that point is a horizontal slash, and your R2 is a vertical slash. Now, what makes Transient Moonlight different, of course, as we all know, is the fact that it shoots out a beam on both of those attacks, going horizontally and vertically respectively. Now that said, the R1's horizontal beam is going to be a shorter reaching beam, it is going to have a lot less distance, and the R2's vertical beam will have much more distance to the attack. So keep that in mind when you're using it, and if your opponent is backing off and you need a fast attack, go for the R1, if they are backing off and they are a decent distance away already, go for the R2. Now, what makes this so special is the way that the beams, first off, calculate their damage, and secondly, the fact that the damage is stackable. So, the way the beams come up with their damage, of course, is a big part of it. The beam is pure magic damage, which means that it is more easily augmented by percentage-based buffs to your weapon. So, if you put on something like, oh, you know, the uh, buff from your Physic that increases your magic damage, well, you already have a high percentage or high base value for that beam because it's a pure magic beam. So, the percent increase on your Physic buff is going to be a higher amount. The percent's the same, but the overall total is going to be better. On top of that, if you throw on something like the Shard of Alexander, which, let's be honest, almost everyone does, the way that works is also going to have an impact on the weapon as well, because you have two parts to your attack. You have the Slash, and you have the Beam, and they both benefit independently from the Shard of Alexander. So, if you hit your opponent with the Beam and with the Sword, then you can effectively stack up your damage even further. So, this weapon is very powerful in that regard. The damage, the way it's added up is, let's be honest, it's overtuned for the skill. For the rest of the weapon itself, the damage is actually fine, to be honest. It's not even the most damaging katana. It doesn't have the highest attack rating, it doesn't have anything special with the motion values. It's not the strongest katana as far as just the katana is concerned. But when you throw Transient Moonlight in there, suddenly things change, and they change dramatically, because it's such a quick attack. Both the R1 and the R2 are such quick attacks, and with being able to deal that much damage that fast, that's kind of a problem. This weapon, I can't imagine, will be left alone as far as nerfs are concerned. It will happen. It's a matter of when, and a matter of what type of nerf. Now, what I can see them doing is increasing the stamina drain on the skill usage. That would be one good way to deal with it. Another 
would be to increase the cost in terms of focus points. That would be a good way to deal with it as well. Because as it stands, to deal that much damage and be able to do it so many times and spam away with your attacks, it's a problem. So, I find that, at least in my opinion, the best way for it to be managed is either to have the damage reduced, which is one option, but it would still lead to people spamming. So, to deal with the spamming issue instead, as opposed to the damage issue, I think that either higher stamina consumption or higher focus point consumption is probably the way they should go, but it remains to be seen on what they'll actually do. Who knows, maybe this is the last patch that we'll ever receive and we'll be on version 1.5 or 1.05 until the DLC eventually comes. If there is DLC, who knows. Either way, pipe dreams aside, cons of the weapon, there's really none. The only real con of this weapon is that it causes people to forget that there's other intelligence weapons. That's all I've got. That's really, truly all there is. So, with this weapon, I feel like it needs a nerf, and I feel like it's quite powerful because of Transient Moonlight, and only because of Transient Moonlight. The weapon itself, as far as the katana itself is concerned, it's nothing special. It is average at best for katanas. Now that said, katanas are very powerful, don't get me wrong, so average for a katana is higher than an average for all weapons across the game. Regardless, it's a good weapon. It is a good katana, and it is extremely reliable, but I feel like people are attributing it to the katana itself as opposed to the skill, so I think that it would be best for the conversation around this weapon if we talked about it as though they were two separate things, because even though it is a somber weapon and it is stuck with that skill, and that skill is stuck with that weapon, they're, they're tied together, they are vastly different in terms of what the issue is with the weapon and with the skill. So, it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, then please do all the YouTube things for me. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you think about this weapon and the situation regarding it and its skill. Let me know down in the comments your opinion on all of that. But anyway, thank you again for stopping by, and I will see you all next time.